Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello, teacher. Hello, students. Welcome to today's lesson, which focuses on expanding our vocabularies. In some of our lessons, we have learned that there are words that we use in the English language that have families or groups. This means that while we may make a statement like, Dawit jumped down the stairs, there are other ways to say the same thing, like Dawit hopped down the steps. In this lesson, we will examine some words and try to group them into the correct families. We will use this as a means for remembering words that we do not understand or often forget. Are you ready, students? Let us begin. There are many strategies people have developed over the years for remembering words they frequently forget. Most often, when we cannot remember the word we are supposed to use in the right context, we try to think of other words that have a similar meaning or belong to the same group. For instance, perhaps you have attempted to describe something but found your vocabulary was missing the accurate words. As a result, you may have tried to seek out a word that means the same thing or something similar. This word association can make it much easier to memorize the vocabulary that is appropriate in different contexts. For example, in this situation, Amara is running across the field very fast. We might say that Amara is dashing across the field. We might also say Amara is walking very fast, which uses a different word to get the same point across. While walking is not the same as running, by saying someone is walking fast, we are making a statement that is very similar. Both words relate to the motor action of our legs. So do the words running or jogging, which means they could also belong to the same group or family. Students, let us try to form some word groups of our own to see if we understand how to use this system of memorization to our advantage. For this activity, you will be presented with a list of words. Form groups using this list and give each group a family name that represents the words found within each one. You may begin. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, everyone. Each of the groupings that are relevant here are quite different from one another, so I imagine this was not too difficult. You may have chosen to name each of your groups differently, but it is very likely each of our groups is composed of the same words. Freight truck, port, and shipping can be grouped together as words that are all associated with the trade industry. Tails, beaks, wings, and claws are all animal characteristics and can be grouped as such. Meters, hectares, liters, and milligrams are all units of measurement. Finally, internet, library, encyclopedia, and dictionary can be grouped together as sources of information. Did you group the words into the same families as we just listed? If so, Excellent work! Before we begin our next activity, let us discuss some of the ways we can communicate a concept without using the word itself. These strategies are very useful if you are trying to say something but lack the vocabulary to do so. One such method is to use a bilingual dictionary. This way, you can look up the word you want to say in Amharic and find the translation for it in the book. Another possible strategy is to use a word in another language that you know to see if it is in any way similar to the one you want. Many languages share similar word structures and meanings, so there is a strong possibility that the word you want to use will sound like the one you will use in its place. You can also mime the word. If you do not know the word, but you do know what it means, you could act out what the word describes. When there is a strong language barrier between two people, this is often very effective. Sometimes, it is also wise to use a general word like thing or stuff in place of the word we want. While this does not work in every situation, most people will generally be able to figure out what you mean in the context. Finally, if you know what the word means, you can define it without using it. While it is a bit more cumbersome, to explain things in this way, it is likely you will learn the word more quickly if you know what it means. It is also an extremely accurate way to communicate if you are capable of exercising this frequently. In this activity, we will try to use some of these strategies in practice. Working with a partner you will choose three words each from the list. Do not tell your partner what they are. Take turns explaining the words one at a time, either by using the miming technique or the definition of the word, but never by using the word itself. Are you ready, everyone? Let us get started. Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. I imagine you had a lot of fun working through this activity. Hopefully, you found this useful in learning ways to explain words that are not yet in your vocabulary. Though it is often preferable to know the actual word, having these strategies makes it clear that there are other ways to communicate ideas effectively. This concludes our lesson for today. We have learned that one way to remember words in our vocabulary is to associate them with groups or families. This allows us to establish some of the other words we may be able to use in the place of one we do not know. It also gives us a basis to remember the word since we can easily draw from other words like it. We also learned that there are other ways to communicate words we do not know. We used some of those strategies today to define words or explain concepts without using the word itself. I trust you will find these skills useful in your future studies. In our next lesson, we will begin our unit on finding a job. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.